we took a look at the VAERS data set, which is the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. It's uh, co-managed by the FDA and the CDC, and it's just uh, publicly available data. So you could go to the CDC website and just download this gigantic data set for you know, hundreds of thousands of, of adverse event reports. It's a passive reporting system, which means that um, you know, anybody can put, put their reports in. So it could be the average person on the street entering an adverse event. It could be a nurse, it could be a doctor, et cetera. And there's nobody policing this site, right? I mean, there's consequences. You can't go file a false report. It's technically punishable by law. Um, but it's not, uh, it, it's, it's not, uh, the data is not re reviewed and cleaned. There are certain things that people have to report. There's certain adverse events that clinicians must report. And industry who has, uh, you know, produced these vaccines is required to report their adverse events into the system also. So there's limitations to the system, but it's also robust because it has a high number of, of patients uh, and adverse events reported. So we looked at this, um, there were 314,000 adverse events um, that we looked at over about a six and a half month period from January of 2021 to June, mid-June of 2021. So when the vaccines first were rolled out in the United States. And uh, we only looked at FDA approved vaccines, so that would be the you know um, mRNA vaccines of Pfizer and Moderna, and then the Johnson, Janssen, J&J, &J, um, vaccine uh, as the adenovirus vector vaccine that we have that's approved here. And so what we found overall is that neurological events are very uncommon post-vaccination. Um, the things that had already been identified by the CDC as possible uh, relationships between the vaccine and adverse event, namely um, cerebral sinus thrombosis and Guillain-Barre syndrome, were happened at higher frequency than what you would expect in the baseline population following the Janssen vaccination. What we also did find was that there was a higher frequency of seizures happening after the Janssen or J&J &J vaccine than what you would normally expect in the population in terms of baseline seizure rates. Um, you know, that was a novel kind of thing that we reported. But if you look at the original trials that led to the approval of the J&J &J vaccine, um, there was a higher risk of seizure in the patients that received the vaccine compared to the placebo group. Um, and that sort of did bear out in this kind of, you know, quaternary type of study or real world study. Um, but overall, most serious events happen in less than one in a million people. So very, very uncommon. Um, and most of them, besides the three I mentioned related to the Janssen vaccine, did not happen at a higher frequency than what you would just generally expect to occur in the population. Um, when we looked at you know, COVID itself, the neurological events related to COVID itself um, occur 500 times more often than they, after a vaccine, for example. So you're much higher risk if you get COVID of having a neurological event than after a vaccine.